Hi, it's Friday, May 15th. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. My name is Dwyer. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I made a video um, yesterday or the day before where I talked about how I fought against Anthony Joshua, uh, one of the current heavyweight champions, that Mike Tyson would have six minutes of viability. Right, Tyson, who, quite frankly, I think might have today the faster hand speed than Anthony Joshua and who moves better than Andy Ruiz, who beat Anthony Joshua. Right? I thought that Tyson, in the first six minutes, might be able to bum rush Anthony Joshua, let his hands go, try to land something big early. I also made the point, and it's actually in the second half of the video, that I thought a better fight against Anthony Joshua, if it were a six-round scheduled fight, would be Evander Holyfield. Right? Simply because Evander Holyfield is better defensively than Mike Tyson, Evander moves well. I know Evander's 57 years old, and I know father time is unbeaten, but Evander Holyfield is completely committed to his health, right? He's the 57-year-old at your health club who is hitting the weights, who has kept himself in shape, who looks like he has a better body than most men in their 30s. Right? You're not going to see a gut on Evander Holyfield. He's always in shape. You understand that someone who's devoted to their health, who goes jogging every day, who lifts weights, who eats right, who prioritizes fitness, is not going to be as sluggish as an older guy who doesn't. So... That video, to my surprise, I am a little surprised, I'm pleased, but I'm surprised by this, has generated a lot of comments, right? Many people feel that I'm picking on AJ, that I've never given AJ his proper due. People are also outraged, I mean completely outraged at the thought that I'm suggesting that Evander Holyfield would be competitive against AJ in a six-round exhibition match. Right? Here's a comment from V's and Beats, who's been a great subscriber over the years. V's and Beats, I've noticed your comments on other videos. And he flatly says it hurts your credibility. To hear you say a 59-year-old Holifield gives AJ problems. I know you don't rate him, but that's just silly. Right, now let me make a point here, and it's going to sound a little petty. But every year counts when you're well into your 50s. Holifield was born October 19, 1952. He is 57 years old not 59, right? More importantly, in his entire career, he's never been KO'd early in a fight. He's never been KO'd in the first six rounds of a fight. Despite fighting Tyson, Lennox Lewis, Ray Mercer, George Foreman, Michael Dokes, Pinklin Thomas, Dwight Braxton, and even Haseem Rockman, who famously stopped Lennox Lewis. Right? Understand, Holifield fought them all. He's never been knocked out in the first six rounds. Never. 
So let me just say, um, AJ, he's a guy who, like Vladimir Klitschko, a guy who I feel is an obvious Hall of Famer, a multi-year heavyweight champion, right? Like Vladimir Klitschko, AJ isn't blessed with fast hands. Like Vladimir Klitschko, if you hit AJ on the side of the head, he might go down. He doesn't have a great chin. Let me say, too, that unlike Mike Tyson, AJ is a guy who takes a while to get going. Let's compare him to another great champion, Lennox Lewis. Right? Understand, I know Lennox Lewis has his fights where he rushed across the ring and finished a guy. Right? The Andrew Galata fight comes to mind. There's also the Michael Grant fight where Lennox Lewis was headhunting, took out Michael Grant. But Lennox Lewis was really more of a counterpuncher, not a lead puncher. Styles matter. Right? Lennox Lewis wasn't the Mike Tyson type fighter, the Rocky Marciano type fighter, who was more concerned with their offense than what, whatever you're doing. Right? These guys come across and whatever you're trying to do, they're emptying the gun. You have to worry about them. If you're not punching back, they'll lead. They're not looking for a lot of nuance. Well, that's who AJ is. AJ is cautious. He's not reckless early. He's not one to run across the ring and try to empty the gun on Evanda Holifield in the early rounds of the fight. Not only that, AJ knows something. He knows his punch resistance isn't that great. What round was it where he first hits the canvas in that first Andy Ruiz fight? The third round? There's a film online here, an amateur fight between him and Dylan White. He gets dropped in that amateur film. We're hearing Daniel Dubois may have dropped AJ in sparring. Then, of course, there's the Vladimir Klitschko knockdown in that fight. When AJ gets up, folks, he's finished. Right? One of the stories of the last 10 years in the heavyweight division is why Vladimir Klitschko didn't jump on AJ when he had AJ hurt. That's not a flash knockdown. Right? Let's revisit the seventh round of the first Andy Ruiz fight. AJ's over by the side of the ropes. Folks, he's getting battered. Those aren't slips or anything like that. He's getting beaten up, ends up on the side of the ring. Then Andy drops him. Now, when young Mike Tyson used to run across the ring and destroy guys, he was in his early 20s. People feel they're bulletproof in their early 20s. Mike Tyson was accustomed to doling out punishment, not getting punishment. AJ, who's several years older than Mike Tyson was then, knows he's fallible. He's been hit and hurt in the ring. He did not know the punch that Andy Ruiz hit him with that dropped him in the first fight. He was that dazed and confused. So if he starts slow against the guy who, quite frankly, has fought some of the biggest punchers in recent memory, right? Lewis and Foreman, major punchers. If you remember Ray Mercer, you know he's a major puncher too. Mike Tyson, the definition of a major puncher. Evander knows he has a chin. He's the opposite. He's the opposite of AJ. Evander has never been stopped in the first six rounds. So AJ, in my opinion, the way 
the sparring session would play out. And let me point out too, the idea of a Tyson or a Holofield hopping in the ring for charity and sparring against big names in the heavyweight division like Anthony Joshua is financially viable, right? As you, the viewers, have pointed out to me, both Tyson and Holofield have talked about donating whatever they win to charity. Right? So you don't need big-time promoters. You don't need any promoter, quite frankly, for this. Understand, if the zone who has a contract with AJ, if the zone is on their game, all they have to do, and it's a subscription service, full disclosure, I'm a subscriber, all they have to do is to approach the AJ crowd and say, hey, you know, Evander Holyfield wants to spar with you for six rounds. Give us the opportunity to have the sparring session sponsored by some corporation. Isn't this what media outlets do? Can't the zone say to Ring Magazine or some other outfit, hey, why don't you sponsor, pay some money that'll go to, you know, some homeless shelter, right? Some charity out there. Can't they just say, hey, you know, sponsor this. Be our sponsor. We'll match your donation to the charity of the fighter's choice. Right? Can't the zone do that? Couldn't the zone just broadcast this? Couldn't the zone pay some money? What's the harm for a corporation? Paying some money to a charity the fighters can get compensated through the expense part of the deal, right? Oh, we'll pay for your expenses. Mike, how much will it cost you to train for a six-round exhibition against Anthony Joshua? Right? Understand, too, if it's a sparring session, it may not require the kind of regulatory scrutiny that a real fight would. So these boxing commissions that are dying for the opportunity to give some guy a hardcore medical test before they grant him a boxing license, they might not come into play if this is deemed just a glorified sparring session for charity. Right? In a six-round sparring session, I'm just telling you, AJ's going to have to find a Vander Holyfield. When he finds a Vander, he's going to find out that a Vander's in spectacular shape. 457 year old. Then he's going to have to deal with Evander's skill levels while Evander still has stamina. Right? Understand, as you get older, you still have some skills. Right? Chris Mullen, there's a video here online. Beat Kevin Durant in a three point shooting contest. And Mullen, of course, was on the 84 Olympic team. Right? When you're older, you still have some skills. The problem is, you don't have the stamina. Right? Your body is not what it was. You might have reflexes at the beginning of an exercise. The problem is, the reflexes fade faster. What used to be the tenth round for you is now the fourth round. Okay, we all understand that. But my goodness, if A.J. hops in the ring, A.J. a slow starter, a cautious fighter. If he hops in the ring <laughs> against Evander Holyfield, who has never been stopped in the first six rounds, never, and has fought multiple Hall of Famers. Young people might not remember Dwight Braxton, right? Dwight Cowie, he changed his name later. Oh, he's a hell of a fighter. Young people might not remember Michael Dokes. Dokes at one point was heavyweight champion. Hell of a fighter. I'm sure most of the viewers here remember Tyson, Lewis, Mercer, and Foreman. Folks, those are hard hitters. And you mean to tell me that Holofield wasn't stopped in the first six rounds by any of those men? 
understand Holofield fights Riddick Bowe three times. Right? In none of the three fights does he get stopped in the first six rounds. So let's say AJ decides, hey, I'm going to try to corner Evander Holofield. Right? I believe Holofield in his last five fights. I know he fought Value Ev when Value Ev had the title. I know toward the end, too, he also fought Sultan Abragamov when Abragamov had a title. Right? What I believe AJ would find is that he can't corner Evander Holofield in the first round because Evander's in shape at 57 and because Evander still has skills. Right? AJ's not Ali. He doesn't have the hand speed to force the issue. Holofield's going to see the punches coming. AJ is a talented, skilled fighter. Right? But understand, he doesn't have the hand speed to completely impose himself on Evander Holofield. Finally, let me say this about protecting my reputation. Years ago, I was in a fantasy football pool that had a bunch of lawyers in it and engineers. And I showed up with a few pieces of paper. And I looked across and everyone had magazines. They had the same magazines. Right? So as I was looking around, I thought, gee, where is anyone here going to get an edge on anyone else? If you're going off the same rankings from the same magazines, right? I'm not here trying to follow public opinion. In my opinion, if you follow public opinion, you're not going to get alpha. You're not going to have an edge on the NASDAQ, the Dow Jones, your sport betting percentage and stuff like that. The public is often wrong. Conventional wisdom sometimes proves to be completely off base. I'm here online. I'm not worried about my reputation. If that means that I have to agree with the public and I can't do the math and figure out that Evander Holofield in the first half of a fight is very hard, very hard to dock down, that he's fought big punchers like AJ before, Again, Tyson, Lewis, Mercer, and Foreman. And didn't get stopped in the sixth round of any of their fights. Right? Some of these guys he fought multiple times. Tyson, Lewis. Right? I've seen Evander in interviews. He's in shape, folks. Just like Vladimir Klitschko's always in shape. Right? If I didn't know Evander Holofield was 57, I would never have guessed it. Let's just say, too, I've also been to the park playing basketball, and I know, being an older guy myself, I know older guys can hold their own for a few minutes. Right? Maybe AJ starts cuffing Holofield around in the fourth round, right? Okay, whatever. My point to you, as a fan of boxing, right? We're all judges of fights. Don't you think don't you think that Holofield might take at least a couple of the early rounds? Let's say they go into round four and Holofield's bank two rounds. You don't think Holofield doesn't have the skill level to flash his hands a few times, the boxing know how, the experience? to possibly try to make it look like he's won three rounds or four rounds. Let's just say, I know the odds, just based on the comments, would be completely staggered in AJ's favor. That's what I'm banking on. right? I know many people would have a lower over-under than they did for the AJ-Dominique Brazil fight. I believe that over-under was less than four rounds. But they'd be dealing with a Boxing Hall of Famer. <laughs> they'd be dealing with a Boxing Hall of Famer who made a career of surviving. 
a guy who wasn't hit hard with big shots early by Mike Tyson in two fights. Right? I stand by my earlier video. I think in an exhibition, six rounds, not 12, six rounds, Evander Holyfield would give AJ some problems. Let me just say this too. If today's heavyweights are serious about learning the craft, then what they should be doing is bringing in these older heavyweights who've done it before. There's some great videos here online of Joseph Parker talking with Larry Holmes about throwing a jab. I can't think of a better teacher for a current fighter to talk with about how to throw a jab. There's another video here online of current 168 pound champion Caleb Plant talking with James Tony. And Tony's talking to him about slipping punches. Now understand, Caleb Plant is one of the best in the game at slipping punches. Right? But at the same time, if you're Caleb Plant and you want to stay ahead of the competition, who better to talk to about counter-punching, pivoting, and slipping punches than James Tony? Right? Boxing's a skill game. These are the guys with the skills. If you structure an exhibition where it's only six rounds long and you put in a young champ who knows that his chin's not the best, who doesn't rely on hand speed, can't just go over to the older guy and overwhelm him with youthful hand speed, right? Might not have the legs to just track down the older guy. In fact, the older guy's in shape and might have better legs. Then you're talking about a fight that might be competitive at the six-round mark. That's how I see it. Whatever my reputation is, I'm not worried about it. Let's just keep it on the reel here. That's how I see it. Let me hear more from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me just close by saying this too. I know the AJ crowd is upset with me. They claim that I'm not giving the fighter enough respect. What I want the AJ crowd to realize is that a Vladimir Klitschko, who's very similar to AJ, very similar to AJ, a Vladimir Klitschko took years, even after his Olympic gold medal. He's the 96 Olympic gold medalist. Right? He took years to become the Vladimir Klitschko that we remember. Right? Years. He figured out how to use that jab. He figured out how to lean back. He figured out that he didn't want to be in shootouts in a rough and tumble heavyweight division. He suffered car crashes. That Corey Sanders fight's a complete disaster. Never fights Corey Sanders again. Now we're seeing AJ go through growing pains. I don't know how the AJ crowd feels their fighters unbeatable after the Evander Holof excuse me, after the Vladimir Klitschko fight. And let's remember, Klitschko had already been beaten by Tyson Fury and then was out the ring for a year. And he drops AJ in the first half of a fight. Understand, AJ is almost stopped by Vladimir Klitschko in round six. And I don't know how you could look at AJ in the first Andy Ruiz fight and feel that he's finished product. Let me go one step further. Andy Ruiz, who still, in my opinion, has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division, has won one and lost one against AJ. What I want people to think about is the fact that Andy now has one of the best trainers in the sport. He has Canelo's trainer, right? If Andy can figure out 
how to move his feet a little bit faster, how to get out of his construct and run over and force AJ to actually engage against him. Not allow AJ to dance around the ring like he did his second fight. I don't know why it's a foregone conclusion among many of you that AJ beats Andy Ruiz in a rubber match. Right? Let's remember in the 70s, Ali and Fraser fought other people. Before they get back in the ring for the rematch and before they get back in the ring for the thrill in Manila, AJ still has unfinished business with Andy Ruiz. Keep in mind too, AJ, we can blame whoever we want. Let's quote Millie Vanilli and blame it on the rain. AJ still hasn't fought Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury. So when I look at AJ, I see a guy who still has a lot to prove, who's had car crashes. Right? Who, in a division that has Daniel Dubois, who's rumored to have dropped him already, and Joe Joyce. I don't know why people are sleeping on Joe Joyce. In a division where you have Dylan White, who dropped AJ already as an amateur. I know Dylan lost that shoulder injury fight to AJ earlier in his career. But understand, there's some guys in the heavyweight division now who would give AJ a tough time. Right? That's the nature of competition. I'm here praising Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield lost to Riddick Bow. Evander Holyfield, in my opinion, lost to Lennox Lewis twice. Evander Holyfield got stopped by James Toney. Right? The heavyweight division is too competitive. It's, it's simply too competitive for us to be anointing a guy a king like the AJ folks seem to be anointing AJ right now. Is it that laughable that a guy like Evander Holyfield <laughs> would be able to survive a few rounds against AJ? You gotta be kidding me, folks. He survived 24 rounds against Lennox Lewis. That's how I see it. Let me also say, too, I know people are saying, oh, age, oh, oh, and I agree, Father Time is unbeaten. This is the heavyweight division we're talking about. Right? Some of the names I've mentioned. How old was Vladimir Klitschko when he fought? Anthony Joshua. Right? How old was Luis Ortiz when he last fought Deontay Wilder? I'm just telling you, the heavyweight division has a later expiration date than the smaller divisions, right? Now, 57, okay, Evander Holyfield is several years removed from his prime. But if Vladimir Klitschko was competitive with AJ, and Klitschko was, what, around 40-ish, late 30s, right? I don't think it's that much of a stretch for a guy who has the kind of chin to not have been knocked down by Mike Tyson in two fights or Lennox Lewis in two fights. I don't think it's that much of a stretch to feel that AJ might have a tough time catching Evander Holyfield for at least a couple of rounds. And that even if he caught Holyfield, that Holyfield wouldn't be able to survive the round because, quite frankly, that's what Holyfield did for most of his career. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.